Hi lovelies and welcome in my kitchen. Today we are preparing a wholesome little breakfast for Lamas or Lunasa. A beehive shaped honey and lavender bread with a sweet vanilla forest berry and cherry jam. Lunasa or Lamas as it is called in Christian context is one of the Wiccan Sabbaths celebrating the harvest season on the 1st of August. Even though I am not Wiccan as I'm a secular witch I always enjoy this holiday immensely, as I love celebrating the abundance nature is offering us. Bread is a very popular item to prepare for this specific day, as the etymology of the word Lamas does originally come from Loefmas, and the tradition of bringing a freshly baked bread made from the first crop to church. Lunasa, which is the pagan term and preceded the Christian customs that it influenced, is in essence celebrating the same thing. The festival is named after the Celtic god Lu. It was a day to celebrate the first harvest of crops and fruit and offerings to the gods were made. Usually on sacred places and up on top of hills and mountains. Celebrating the spirit of this harvest festival, I thought it was a fun idea to get out and about in nature, see what has been growing and what treats Mother Nature is offering us, and then celebrate this happy day with a homemade summer breakfast. If you can't harvest out in nature, you can of course find every ingredient needed in a supermarket, or you can take this chance to visit a little farmer's market and purchase regionally harvested produce to support your local businesses. Well, first we will need to get out and about to pick some wild berries in the forest. We will pick blueberries that you can mainly find in half shadowy grounds on coniferous or mountain needle leafed forests. They should be picked when they have fully ripened as only then they have developed their full aroma. You can tell by their color as well as by how easy you can pick them off the bush. In magic, blueberries are said to have strong protective powers for home, harp and family. Wild cherries are a perfect little addition to this gem, even though they are a witch to discern, as they don't have much flesh to them. Did you know that in magic beliefs, cherries are linked to love and fertility? As Lunasa is along with Beltane another popular time of the year for hand fastings, it is a great fruit to use for the holiday. And last but not least, my personal childhood favorite, raspberries. They can mainly be found along forests and on clearings. The sunnier the spot you pick them, the more berries you will find and the sweeter they taste. They are another magical ingredient popular in fertility and pregnancy spells. Perfect if you're planning on having a spring baby next year. It is best to pick berries during the morning hours as their aroma is the most intense by then. Be careful not to pick berries from too close to the ground. Those have a higher chance of carrying worms that can cause serious illness in humans. Of course, it is also necessary to wash the berries very well when you come back home. If you want to know more about wild foraging, your own berries, fruit or herbs, I made a video on what to keep in mind when wild crafting like a green witch and have linked it up here and in the description box below. Next we will harvest some lavender to give our bread a very subtle summery floral taste and all the summer sun's happy energies. Of course you can also use dry lavender. Next we want to go to the beehive to get our honey. Just kidding, I have no idea how to do that and would probably get stung to death. But I found a great wild blossom honey at our local beekeepers that I will use. If you have the chance to support your local beekeepers, please do. The honey is of higher quality as the sometimes fake honey in the supermarket and the beekeepers actually make great effort to keep the bee population healthy and in high numbers, which is so important for the environment. Now that we have all that we need, let's go to the kitchen and get baking. As always, you will find all the ingredients needed in the description box below. First, we start by preparing the dough for the bread. We combine the warm water and rolled oats in a large bowl letting them sit for a couple of minutes to soak. Now we add some hand-warm milk, the honey and yeast to it. Stir it in and let it sit for about 5 minutes, giving the yeast some time to start reacting with its new environment. Now we can add in salt and 1 tablespoon of the melted but mostly cooled down butter. 
We also add the egg and then a tablespoon of lavender, fresh or dried. Just make sure that you use culinary lavender so that it has not been treated with colorants, pesticides or other yucky things that have no place in this delicious bread. Now we combine this and while we do so, we want to add in the flour cup by cup. Here you need to just see how much of it you will need. Always knead the dough in between and stop adding flour once you have a nice workable dough that is not too sticky. Knead it a couple of minutes until the dough is elastic, bouncing back in shape and being poked. Like I wish my thighs would, but alas, they just wobble. Now line a bowl with reusable baking sheets or a fine layer of oil. Place the dough into it and cover it with a towel. Now we let it sit in a cozy and warm spot, maybe near a window in the summer sun. It will need to rise for about an hour until it has doubled in size. And now we need a small baking bowl that can safely go in the oven. So either glass, ceramics or metal. Do not use plastic bowls, they will melt and possibly set your house on fire. Set it on a covered baking tray and grease it lightly with butter or oil. Now we want to divide the dough in about four parts and roll it into ropes. We start at the top of the bowl, rolling the first rope around just like so and continuing all the way down to the bottom. When you're done with one rope, just take the next one and attach it so it gives the illusion of one continuous piece. And this is how we create a little beehive. If you don't have enough dough to reach all the way down, don't worry, as the dough will still raise and expand and grow. We want to cover this little work of art one more time and let it sit in a warm spot for another half hour, so the dough can recover from all that poking and prodding. Then we can take the rest of the melted butter and apply a fine layer all over our beehive. This will now go in the oven at around 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for around 20 minutes or until the outside of the bread is a light golden color. It is important to let it cool down completely before you lift it off the bowl so it doesn't rip apart. By the way, the idea for the bread came out of the World of Warcraft cookbook. I did slightly adjust it though. If you enjoy more video game inspired cooking videos, I have linked my playlist for World of Warcraft and Skyrim recipes up here and in the description box below, along with links for the two cookbooks. Now in the meantime, we will make a wild berry and cherry jam with subtle notes of vanilla. As I only harvested a small amount, I will now only make as much as I need for myself. We want to make sure that all berries are thoroughly washed, de-stoned and if you pick them wild, freed from any kinds of bugs or wolves. I know, country life always sounds so romantic until we are confronted with the reality of it. Then we will put them in a little pot, squeeze in the fresh lemon juice and add vanilla. You can either use drops, fresh vanilla bean or vanilla sugar. Totally up to you and your preference. We add in a bit of sugar if you would want to keep this jam. The amount of sugar had to be reasonably high to make this jam preservable for longer amounts of time. For the exact measurements you can find the recipe down below. But as I'm only making a small batch for immediate consumption, I'm a bit more conservative with the sugar as the berries already add their own sweetness to it and I don't like overly sugary stuff anyway. We let that cook on small heat until the berries have fallen apart. Now we can use this still warm on our freshly baked honey and lavender bread. The flavor combination of these is just amazing and perfectly fits the first festival of the summer harvest. You can literally taste the sunshine on golden fields, the scent of lavender on a mild summer night, the buzzing of the bumblebees in a sea of colorful flowers, and the wildness of picking berries as a kid in the forests behind the house. So what are your plans for celebrating Lunasa this year? Please let me know in the comments down below or share your ideas with the other people watching. I wish you a beautiful celebration and next time we will speak a bit more about the topic of visualization in witchcraft. 
Have a fantastic day. See you soon.